The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Greetings programs, happy holidays, and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. Matthew here, you there, and this is Hallmark's 2018 holiday keepsake ornament. It is a miniature Donkey Kong cabinet. Uh, has all the little miniature artifacts here, the little joystick and the buttons and all the artwork and everything. And I'm thinking, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, Self, they've gone through all the trouble to make this a little scale miniature Donkey Kong cabinet. Why don't I make it an actual miniature Donkey Kong cabinet? So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to turn this little Christmas tree ornament into a working Donkey Kong cabinet that we can still hang on the Christmas tree. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Let's start by opening up the battery compartment and pop those out. Okay, I don't see any real obvious extra points of entry, uh, but there is this, uh, there's a seam right here, and that tells me that this whole back panel can come off. So let's try the warranty voiders. Ah! It broke my warranty voider! Oh, oh, this means war. This means war. You broke my warranty voider. Now I'm mad. Ah, there we go. Ah, uh ha. -huh. So there it is. And that's what it looks like inside. So, as you see, we've got these, these uh, molded plastic standoffs that then go into these receivers that are molded plastic on this side. And it's glued together. It's all glued in. So, let's see. What do we got here? We've got our speaker. Little speaker there. This is our little board that has the... Uh, has a little black bob, black blob on there with the chip that holds the sound. This is the button, and a button and an LED. And then there's an LED right here for, uh, I'm assuming, the screen. So now that we've got this guy all torn down to his little shell here, just got to figure out how to put our parts in here. So what I'm thinking, uh, just a simple single board computer, uh, single function Linux install of um, either MAME or just an NES emulator to run Donkey Kong on here. And of course, uh, Raspberry Pi, a little bit big. So I think we're gonna have to go down to that little guy. Of course, that's our Pi Zero. So if we're, you know, that's, that'll fit in there, you know, pretty nicely. So that will work just fine. So if we have our cabinet here, that'll probably be in there like that. The screen sits behind uh, the actual like bezel here. So if I do that, I can do this one of two ways. I can either get a larger, like a 1.8 T, uh, 1.8 inch TFT screen to mount right here along there, or maybe Maybe just maybe I can use this uh, little, this is like a 0.96 inch OLED screen that will fit just right there, just smack up against the uh, the bezel there. I think that might be best. And then I can black in or black out the screen right there behind it. So either way, we're going to have a screen somewhere, maybe like that. The other major consideration, of course, is controls. And this is going to be a working cabinet, so I've got to get some working controls here. I think what I'm going to use is a little five position joystick type switch, something like this from Newark Electronics. So we'll put that in there and maybe lick a little small tack switch to work as our jump button. Uh, this of course has, it's one, two, three, four, up, down, left, right. And then you push in, there's another function there. So I'll probably use that as like start, something that doesn't have to be used all the time. And then the other button will be, um, will just be the jump button. So minimalist, minimalist control scheme here. Um, so we'll do that there. And then on our rear board, we'll have to 
We've got a got a speaker in here already. I've got an eight ohm speaker already mounted in here. Why mess with a good thing? I'll just put a, a little amplifier board in there. So we'll have our speaker, the speaker cone sitting back here behind the Pi. Somebody commented on a previous video. They're like, get that boy a new marker. And I'm like, yeah, get that boy a new marker. <laughs> that boy's got to get to got to get to the getting place and get himself a new marker. So speaker there, boop, boop, boop. There's our sound. Ah, there's our sound waves. Oh, uh, that's coming out there, the back. And then uh, we'll probably put, I can probably squeeze uh, a power boost and a battery in here. So of course not an automotive battery, but uh, maybe a LiPo and a power boost. And I think that will do us, um, gonna have to figure out a way to get USB in for power but I'll worry about all that when I start putting the case together. But that's essentially the, uh, that's essentially the concept right there. So you look at it from the front, our screen, and then joystick, button, and that's pretty much it. So let's get this Pi set up. So now before I go any further with this thing, I gotta get some headers soldered onto here so we can actually plug some things in. We have a Pi Zero, and we have this little gem uh, from Adafruit. Now this actually has a spy interface. That's why we enabled the spy interface on here earlier. So now all we gotta do is just match up our uh, pinout uh, to, uh, to the pins that are on here. And of course, element 14 has a handy dandy chart graciously put together by Mr. Christopher Stanton. Shout out Christopher Stanton, good dude. Ah, uh, my friend and yours. For the spy interface, uh, let's see, we need, we need five volts. Um, so that's uh, pin two, zero six, uh, round. We got power, ground. We're just giving a chip select for the car. It has this built-in um, SD card reader, but I don't need that. I need the chip select for the OLEDs. That's OCS, so uh, 24. The reset, reset can be just about anything. We'll skip that. Data command, that could be anything right now. Clock, clock is pin 23. And then we have Mozzie, Mizo. Okay, so Mozzie is 19 and Mizo is 21. So that's our pinout for the screen. I need to look, at, there is probably a driver or a device tree overlay that I need to look at to fill these two in. But other than that, uh, we'll have that. So let's get this thing wired up according to this. And then we'll see where we go. Now, there's a couple of different ways I can I can try to get this screen to run. We can do this the easy way, we can do this the hard way. We're gonna try the easy way first, and that is to use a uh, little uh, Python script called NanoScreen, or it's part of the uh, Adafruit Pi TFT driver thing. Uh, drivers in Linux are <clears throat> hard, so <laughs> I'm gonna try to do this. Uh, off the uh, shoulders of giants, let's put it that way. So in order to get that going, we need to sudo apt get update. Okay, do sudo apt get install python pip. This is a python program. Python, oops, python smbus and Python spy dev. Here we go, a waffling to burn the leaves of green. Here we go, a waffling to bear it to the sea. Let them join you as we waffle in the tunes. Hey, 
What are you guys doing? What? We're waffling. Waffling? No, 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 no. It's not waffling. It's wassailing. Wasseling. Wasseling. What's a wassail? I don't know. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Waffling. Okay. New things are green. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Okay, so those are installed. Now we've got to install a Python module called EvDev. Okay, so what EvDev does, it, it stands for event device. And, and basically it's kind of a go between, uh, between like a, um, a, a kernel device and then like a character device. So it, it basically translates events into um, user space sort of usable events, <laughs> for lack of better words. That's essentially what it does. So it's going to handle a lot of the, uh, the, the spy transfers handling back and forth with uh, with nano screen so it's going to basically handle the communication through spy for nano screen okay and so one more prerequisite before we install nano screen is we need to uh, fix some settings in our config file okay we want to disable the overscan we want to force the hot plug Okay, and one other thing, one other uh, additional little uh, parameter that we need to put in there is HDMI um, underscore CVT equals 384. So it needs a particular resolution to work with, so that's what we're telling it. 384 by 256. Okay, and then now HTTPS colon slash slash github.com slash adafruit slash adafruit underscore user space underscore pi tft. All right. Oh, well, that was easy. <laughs> All right. Well, that's installed. Oh, that's right. It's Python. <laughs> Here I am trying to compile the dang thing and it's in Python, whatever. So that's done. Pseudo reboot. Okay, so we have rebooted the Pi now that NanoScreen is installed. Uh, you can see here that the, uh, the resolution has changed. It is much uh, lower resolution now, uh, which will be good because that's super low resolution. But let's see here, we've got uh, pseudo nano, oh, pseudo nano screen. <laughs> but the, nano, what file am I editing? Pseudo nano screen. I <laughs> got something. Sweet. You can just barely see that, but it is on the screen and it is working. And uh, as I type, you can see that stuff is being typed on the screen. Now this is super ridiculously uh, low res, super ridiculously low res. This is not practical at all. However, however, nobody said it had to be practical. I just wanted to do it. So now that this is set up, the next thing I need to do is get uh, the buttons and the software all kind of just set the way it needs to be. So I'll get the controls all soldered together, get those plugged in and get those mapped. And then we should be able to, uh, we should be able to have a working uh, concept anyway. Uh, I need to wire up a control scheme and uh, what better way to do that than with a small uh, five position toggle switch or a five position joystick. Uh, so this is up, down, left, right, and then if you push in, it's also a, uh, a, a button there. This is the uh, JS5208 from uh, Newark Electronics. And uh, so this is just, you know, your standard five position switch and the pinout. So here's our, our frame. And then it's hard to see on here, but the top of the joystick actually has this little chamfer on it. So that makes it easy to identify which way is up. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six pins for one, two, three, four, five, and the ground. So that's how we're going to be wiring these up. Quick look at the spec sheet on this. Uh, looks like uh, this is 
going to be pin one, and that is the ground. Uh, number two is right. So these are all directions. This is up, this is down, and that's our button. Um, should probably use something BTN. There we go, zero would be like null or not connect, so I'm not gonna use that. So that's essentially how this is gonna work. So uh, Donkey Kong only needs up, down, left, right, and essentially a jump button. So, and a start button. So on the, I'm probably going to use uh, the NES version of Donkey Kong just to make it a lot easier because with MAME you have to have the coin and you have to have one player start, two player start. There's a lot of extra functions that go into uh, the MAME emula uh, implementation of the emulation versus the NES em uh, implementation. The NES port is far simpler, up, down, left, right, A, and start. Uh, select is not used except on the main menu and what I will do is I will just tie select to an A. Since select's not used during the game, I'll tie select to the same button as A, and then it'll just send a signal to both of those pins, and it should just ignore the select button and only do the A button. So that's how that is going to work, and then we'll just, we'll use that to select which game we want, and then start starts the game, which we push down to do start, up, down, left, right, and A, and we're all set. <laughs> So next thing I got to do is I got to install uh, Retro Game, which is a, uh, a shell script that will um, just assign GPIO pins to um, our controls that we have soldered up. Ash Retro Game dot sh. Okay, um, we want two buttons and a joystick. All right, so. Now I gotta get these things set up. Uh, sudo nanu nanu. It's in boot slash retro, retro game dot cfg. Okay, so here is the basic setup for retro game. It's, that's really all I'm gonna need for this game because it's up, down, left, right, jump, and start. Now let's shut this thing down again and we'll wire this guy up. So far so good. We're getting the screen copy. There it is. <laughs> Go up, left, up. That's so awesome, but it works, it works. So I've got, and, and you can see it, it's great. You can freaking see it. Uh, you can tell what's going on. You can absolutely be able, this is totally playable. Okay, so now that all this is ready, now I just gotta stuff all this inside the case and we are, Freaking good to go. Okay, so this is sort of the home stretch now. Um, I have my screen, I have the Raspberry Pi. Uh, this has been all cleaned out of all the little bits on the inside that was taking up all this room and same same over here on the the end piece i have our jump button is glued into place i'll secure that a little bit better now it, it's really just a matter of packing everything into this little tiny case so uh, oh and of course having power for it too i'm gonna be using this uh 3.7 uh, 1200 milliamp hour lipo battery and an adafruit power boost to regulate the power and um then once I'm doing that, uh, the only problem with having this much wire there is that it really just gets in the way of everything else. So I've got to do a little compactimization and get everything kind of, you know, drilled down a little bit better, cut these wires off some, uh, just get everything nice and tight so it'll fit in there. And we're gonna be in business.
Come on, come on, come on, come on, do the donkey Kong. Do the donkey Kong. Oh, sometimes I get tied up on those barrels, it, it, and it's, you know, it's little tiny screens, so it's a little hard to see. So it's okay, it's okay. Normally I could rock some Donkey Kong. Ah! I wasn't off the ladder. So it's not exactly the easiest Donkey Kong to play, but uh, but it works. It works, and it's fun, and it's cute, and it's one of a kind. It is the only, uh, it is the only playable Christmas tree ornament in existence that I know of. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Come on, come on. No! Dang it! Jump too early. Come on. I can do this. Ah, game over. Let's try again. Let's play a new game. So we jump. And climb ladders. And go back and forth. And go up and down. Come on. Come on. Do the Donkey Kong. Alright, alright, alright. Got this. Yes! Come on! Come on! Yeah! Ha <laughs> ha! Take that, Donkey Kong! So here it is. Here is my one of a kind playable Donkey Kong arcade Christmas tree ornament. Yes, this is, um, this is something I've been very excited about, uh, about having. And, uh, now I have a, a one of a kind playable, uh, Donkey Kong ornament. I wanted to put a speaker in here. Of course, I wanted to get the, the actual, you know, game sounds out of here. I didn't have an amplifier small enough to fit in here. Uh, but Adafruit does make one, so I'll probably get one of those and uh, throw that in here just to finish it off so it's got the sound. And uh, the only other thing, uh, I wanted to try and build this with the Pocket Beagle. So uh, I was thinking to do it with Pocket Beagle, but for the life of me, I just could not, I couldn't figure out how to get the display out on the Pocket Beagle. So that was, that was a challenge, so that's when I, I scrapped it and went to the uh, Raspberry Pi Zero. But if you have ideas on how to make the Pocket Beagle work, let us know in the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents. We might actually make it worth your while. Have you ever made a miniature gaming cabinet? Maybe you make custom electronic holiday decorations. Let us know in the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents. My name is Matthew. Happy holidays. And until next time, tally ho, y'all. I want to do the Donkey Kong. Come on, come on, come on, come on, do the Donkey Kong, do the Donkey Kong, come on, come on, come on, come on, do the Donkey Kong, do the Donkey, do the Donkey Kong. Do the donkey, 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 do the donkey.